All right, we're going to uh, continue. This is Dr. Mike Desvartis and uh, Anthony Dwyer, and we're going to continue with our Let's Build a series. This is going to be Let's Build a Pelvis, number one. We're just going to concentrate mainly on the bony f framework here and also some of the ligaments and two, maybe three muscles in the area along with the general blood supply and nerve supply of the pelvis. So, kind of review here, we've got two coxal bones, right? A big coxal bone here, a coxal bone here. We have the femur, the head of the femur. Bony landmarks on the femur are the lesser trochanter and greater trochanter. And of course, the head of the femur fits into the acetabulum. All right, back to the coxal bone. So we've got one coxal bone, two coxal bones, with the sacrum intervening between here with these little holes or eyeballs that transmit branches of the sciatic nerve. This is the top of the sacrum or the promontory, and L5 vertebrae would sit right here. Now each coxal bone or hip bone is made up of three fused bones. And that would be the ilium, the ischium, and the pubis. And of course here's the pubic symphysis where the two pubic bones join and there's a cartilaginous uh, disc here which during pregnancy actually softens up to allow for some expansion. So all those, those three bones, ilium, ischium, and pubis fuse. You've got a depression here, which is called the iliac fossa. You have a crest, which is called the iliac crest. You have some bumps here, an anterior superior, an anterior inferior iliac spine, and a pubic tubercle down here. And in the back, you have a posterior superior and posterior inferior iliac spine. Something else you can see is these two ischial spines. See them kind of sticking medially, very sharp right here. And this interspinous distance is important in females because it gauges, it could gauge whether or not a uh, cesarean is necessary. Now we have these two large eyeballs. I, I always say that the pelvis kind of looks like the helmet of a Star Trek stormtrooper with these two eyes here being the obturator foramen, obturator foramen, which are covered by a membrane and two muscles, an obturator externus and an obturator internus. Uh, in terms of sex, the more acute angle here would be a male, this angle right here, and if it's more obtuse, it's a female. Same thing with the iliac crests. The wider and more splayed they are, the more likely the specimen is a female. This is, I would call, a male pelvis right here. All right, let's start adding some ligaments to our pelvis here. So we're gonna start with the sacrospinous ligament. These are ligaments that come from the sacrum and go to the ischial spine. So that's sacral spinous. So let's do this. I should mention too that there's two notches here on the posterior part of the coxal bone and it's the greater sciatic notch and lesser sciatic notch. Those are important because once we put ligaments on there, we transform those notches into foramen or holes. So that's one sacrospinous ligament. Now let's do another. Sacrum. The magic of clay here. Sacrum, sacrum. You know what I need is my clay and my hot little hands is kind of soft. I need one of those little freezer things where you could spritz and to solidify. Next video.
I like talking to myself. All right, there are the two sacrospinous ligaments, sacrum to ischial spine. Very important ligaments, and you can see them from the inside too. Sacrospinous ligaments. Now we're going to do sacrotuberous ligaments. These are larger, and these come from the sacrum up here all the way to the ischial tuberosity. What is the ischial tuberosity? If you're sitting down right now, you are sitting on your ischial tuberosities. That's what we sit on, the ischial tuberosities. So there you go. Sacrospinous ligament, sacrotuberous ligament, sacrum to ischial tuberosity. Let's kind of put it in anatomical position. Let's add the other one. That's magical, isn't it? So you can see how they kind of cross. And there we have our two holes that I talked about, the greater sciatic foramen, the lesser sciatic foramen. Most of the goodies come out of the greater sciatic foramen. Here's the greater sciatic foramen, lesser sciatic foramen. All right, let's add a couple more ligaments here before the whole thing falls apart. There's two very strong ligaments on the inside here, and these can actually be injured in, in athletes, and, and young, especially young athletes, and that's the sacroiliac ligaments. They connect the ala, or the wings of the sacrum, to the ilium. So if you've heard of people that can have a sacroiliitis or the strained or torn, it's very painful. Sacroiliac ligaments. But they really make the pelvic, pelvis strong, though. All these ligaments really hold those bones tight together. One other kind of pseudo ligament, which is really just a reflection of fascia, is the inguinal ligament. And that comes from the anterior superior iliac spine down to the pubic tubercle on either side. Anterior superior iliac spine pubic tubercle right here. Oh, that's beautiful. And that inguinal ligament plays a role in defining the inguinal canal, which transmits the spermatic cord in the male and the round ligament in the female. All right, so there we are. Let's review those ligaments quickly. Inguinal ligament, we can see. Sacroiliac ligaments. The larger sacro tuberous ligament, sacrotuberous ligament, and the smaller sacrospinous ligament. Make sure it's in the picture there. All right. Let's try to put a few structures through here. Well, let's add some muscles first. Let's add some muscles. Uh, a landmark muscle that kind of defines a lot of structures, determine whether they're superior gluteal or inferior gluteal, is a muscle called the piriformis. I guess it's piriform shape. That's how it gets its name, piriformis. Anyway, it sits here. Can we see that? Yeah, I guess we can. And it sits, it originates from the inside of the sacrum. And it goes to the greater trochanter of the femur. It is a short lateral rotator. And you can see it from the back side. Comes out the greater sciatic foramen. Oh, we just had a horrible traumatic event there. And inserts on the greater trochanter. That's the piriformis muscle. So you see how it's coming out the greater sciatic foramen above the sacrospinous ligament? Okay. Now, let's try to put another muscle in here. 
It's going to be tight, but I think we can do it. This is the obturator muscle. Look at the shape of that muscle before I put it in. It takes a 90 degree turn. It covers the inside of the obturator foramen, makes a turn around going out the lesser sciatic foramen to insert near the greater uh, trochanter. So let's see if we can get it in place here. Tricky, tricky, tricky. There we are covering the, the obturator foramen. So let's tack that down. Beautiful. See how it covers the whole obturator foramen on the inside there? All that blue there. If you look from the outside, you see the obturator foramen is all blue there now. Then it makes this crazy turn coming out the lesser sciatic foramen and ending up basically joining the piriformis muscle. They both get kind of tendon tendinous there. So the piriformis comes out the greater sciatic foramen, the obturator comes out the lesser sciatic foramen. There is one other muscle that I, I'm not going to put in right now but there's a real thin muscle that covers the inside of the sacrospinous ligament and that's called the coccygeus muscle. Probably played a role when we used to have a tail helped us wiggle our tail, but now it's just kind of lending support to some of the pelvic viscera. All right, let's just throw in some arteries and a big nerve and we'll be done here. Arteries, what's the main blood supply in this area? Well, the aorta comes down and it bifurcates around L4, L5. I'm gonna slip this in here where this goes. It comes down and it bifurcates around L4, L5. So there's the bifurcation. What do we call it when it bifurcates? Anthony, I'm going to wake you up. Do you remember what we call this bifurcation of the aorta? Common iliacs Common is correct. Ding, 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 ding. Daily double. <laughs> oh, yes, the common iliac. So you have a left and a right common iliac. The common iliacs are going to split into an internal iliac and an external iliac. Now the external iliac is kind of simple. Gives off a couple small branches like the inferior epigastric, etc. But it goes under the inguinal ligament and then it has a name change. Anthony, what do we call this artery as it goes down the anterior thigh? Oh, the femoral artery. That is the femoral artery, or femoral artery, the big, the main blood supply of the leg actually. Cut that and you're in, you're in bad shit. Now the internal iliac is going to split up into two divisions and a million little branches. That's the one supplying the bladder, the uterus, the rectum, the ovaries, part of the, uh, actually it's going to give off pudendal branches which are going to leave uh, and, and supply blood to the uh, external genitalia and the UG diaphragm, etc. All right. Now we're a little crowded here, so we're going to remove the blood supply. Blood supply be gone. And we're just going to put in one big nerve here. It's kind of like a hand here. One, two, three, four, five. So it's this is going to be the sciatic nerve. Its contributions are L4, 5, S1, 2, 3, right? So let's see if we can slip that in there. That's going to go out the greater sciatic foramen. It's going to go below the piriformis. I'm going to do some surgery here. Just 
this part that comes from above is the lumbosacral trunk, and that's L4-5, and then it's S1, S2, S3. Get my head out of the way. So L4-5, two small nerves come together here, and then it's S1, the S1 nerve root, S2 nerve root, S3 nerve root makes the sciatic nerve, and that comes out, look how colorful that is. That comes out the greater sciatic foramen below the piriformis muscle, above the sacrospinous ligament. And it's gonna make its way down, and it's very, it's the, uh, along with the femoral nerve, is gonna give innervation to the uh, entire lower extremity. So I think that's all I'm going to show now. Let me review it real quickly, especially the ligaments. The ligaments we added on here were the sacrotuberous ligament, sacrospinous ligament, the inguinal ligament, the sacroiliac ligament, Nerve supply, we added the big sciatic nerve, L4, 5, S1, 2, 3. Muscles we added were the crazy obturator internus muscle, innervated by nerve to obturator internus, and the piriformis muscle. So it's piriformis out the greater sciatic foramen, obturator out the lesser sciatic foramen. They are both short lateral rotators. And as a finale, I'll just show this little half pelvis right here, that corresponds to what you're seeing right here. So we're cut at the pubic symphysis and we have no sacrum. This is the iliopsoas muscle, by the way. Iliacus and psoas coming together. But what do we see here on the inside of the pelvis? Obturator internus muscle covering the obturator foramen, making a crazy angle here out the lesser sciatic foramen below the sacral spine, or ischial spine, I, excuse me, ischial spine, making a turn and inserting on the greater trochanter right here. This is piriformis, which would have come off the sacrum, out the greater sciatic foramen. So there you have it. Some more uh, claymation showing you how we can build a pelvis. So that was less, let's build a pelvis one. In Let's Build a Pelvis 2, we'll add some viscera in here and the pelvic diaphragm. Thank you.